Coach talking about positionless football a little bit on offense. He said one of the defensive coaches he worked with, not here, had said that that was something that he was trying to get to at some point. Do you kind of subscribe to that as well? Because we, everything you were talking about last week of corners and safeties kind of having to learn everything. Yeah, you want. Yeah, you'd like to get that. You know, it's it's just the, the thing you got to do is just learn how to play football and understand football. That that's half of it. The guys that are really the outstanding players get the whole thing, just not their position. They get the whole thing. Because there's going to be always things that happen in a game, whatever, that you just got to unwind. They just happen. You know, you hadn't seen them. It's something new. And the guys that can just understand, OK, what just happened, instead of you have to sit down and really explain it to them, that's usually probably that time it's still a little too late. So um, you know, that's why you're trying to teach. You know, we talk about concepts, but you're just also just trying to t teach the game. And you know, we had a little bit of that actually on Sunday in some ways. Does, does this Sunday maybe, uh, I'm not going to say easier, but present more of a traditional challenge for you than last week? No, not really. Uh, you know, we just, we did some uncharacteristic things last week. There's, you know, I've watched that film a lot of times and, um, uh, you know, because that's our job as coaches to get things cleaned up and get them fixed. And a little bit of it is, you know, just things that we, we got to do a better job of as coaches of really fine tuning and really being exact in explaining things on how things are going to work. You know, because, you know, one of our big goals last week was, I know you don't think so, but was take care of the quarterback both in the run game and in the pass game. Don't let him out of the pocket, make him be a pocket passer, and take him on the run game. We had somebody assigned to him on every run. I know it didn't look like it. So, okay, so you go back and you look at that because it's not like these guys don't want to do exactly what you tell them. What do we got to do better as a coaching staff than to make sure that they know exactly what we want? And some of that was just assignments, but some of it was also, like for example, when you run a pressure and you bring a pressure off the edge. You know, everybody's looking at that edge pressure where the guy comes from. The guy that is probably the biggest key is the guy that's on the other edge. Because the other night, like, we brought a pressure. He saw it at the last second. Where did he escape? Out the other side. He's not going to escape where the pressure's coming from. I know we had one that came free and we didn't make the play, but, but the one we came and we got what we wanted, we got him to escape, but the guy didn't keep the edge on the other side as much as he needed to. Well, we got to do a better job of explaining that's football, okay? If we're bringing the pressure here, where's the guy going to escape? Over here. If we're going to bring pressure up the middle, where's he going to escape? It's not going to be up the middle. It's going to be out the sides. So it's, that's, that's kind of what you're talking about. That's learning football. If I'm an end, I can't just run up the field when the pressure's you know, coming from one of those sides, because where the, where's the guy going to escape? So that's the things that we have to learn as a football team. And part of that, a little bit too, is you know people kind of forget that this is the first time some of these guys have run this stuff ever in their life. This is a different system, a different scheme. We didn't run a lot of this stuff in preseason. And so this was the first game that some of those guys actually saw it. So they'll learn from their mistakes, and they'll know the next time we do that, they'll play it different than they did. You know, it's just it's sometimes it's growing pains when you learn a new system. And, you know, we got to do things better. we got to definitely got to coach it better and be very much more precise, you know, than uh, with the players and make sure they know exactly here's the goods about this defense, here's the weak parts about this defense, and we got to try to avoid the weak parts. I've seen quarterback, quarterback ever reach the point that once he gets on in years that you think, all right, I can't fool this guy anymore. There's nothing I can do to trick him. I've got to find a different approach. Or do you always have to try to confuse him? Well, the way I've always looked at Tom Brady is he's got him and Peyton Manning and those guys, they got the chalk last. I'm just going to assume that they're going to see it. They're going to know. It's better to assume that they know what we're doing than assume that they don't. So. That's how when we kind of do structure our defense and structure pressures or whatever we're doing is we got to make sure we're in the right positions to get our job done. Because if you don't, you just got to assume that he's going to do it. A couple years ago, we were playing 
against him and our safety decided he was gonna fool him and kind of lean one way and give him a look. Didn't happen. He ran a seam route on the other side for about 40. You know, he just, he's got the chalk last. And so don't do those things. You know, there's certain things, yeah, we can give them a disguise or something, but even though it's a disguise, this is where you have to be when that ball is snapped. And so, like I say, I just, I've always assumed with him, he's got the chalk last. Does that put a lot of pressure on this defense to be in their spots when they need to be in their spots? Absolutely. Yeah. You just watch anybody that's played against him, ever. And, yeah, I mean, you watch Dallas. If you're not, I don't care who you are. It doesn't have to be Dallas. It's really anybody. If you're not where you're supposed to be, he's going to take advantage of it. That guy, that guy has tremendous vision and a tremendous feel for the game. I mean, he's, he's, if he's not the greatest of all time, I don't know who is. I mean, I think he's, I've been around him a long time. Play, get one against him in practice every day for six years and I've coached against him seven times while on another team as a coordinator. So, and um, he just, he's, he's going to know where people are going to be. So, yeah, you need to be where you need to be at the right time. And I know we can talk about Tom Brady all day long, but he also has a good group of receivers that he can, you know, just pick off when he needs to. I mean, how do you, what's the challenge in, in kind of covering these guys up or at least just getting in their way? Well, the biggest thing is, is that, you know, you can't just play one coverage. You can't go out there and just say, okay, we're going to man them up or I'm just not going to play cover two or I'm just going to play cover three. I think you got to keep mixing the coverages on them. But at the same point in time, uh, the biggest part of it is the biggest challenge is just not let them get a deep ball. You know, make them go the long, hard way. Uh, maybe a ball get tipped. A lot of things can happen. But, you know, you just get – you give them a 50-yard – Touchdown score. It's just that it's just too easy. You got to make them at least work and get down the red zone, shrink the field, hopefully play good in the red zone. You know, get off the field on third down. But the biggest thing is just don't give up just easy plays, whether it's run or pass. Coach, how did up Fabian Monroe play in his first start? It's his first time he opened the season as a starter, though. He did all right. I mean, he really didn't get challenged a whole lot. I think they threw one out route on him in cover one and. You know, but I mean, it was like a 10 yard gain, if that, or something like that. But um, I thought he played pretty well. I thought Fabian played pretty well. I thought he's pretty, pretty steady. Have all this flood of analytics we've seen, you know, in the last few years changed the way you coach or think about the game in any way? No. And uh, first of all, a computer doesn't know if it's raining or the sun's shining or if the wind's blowing or if the score is 6 to 3 or 33 to 3. 30. You know, they just say, this is what analytics say, okay, yeah, you should go for it on fourth down and two. Well, if it's 33 to 30, yeah, you're probably right because nobody's stopping anybody. If it's six to three, I don't know if that's good. Computer doesn't tell you that. So I'm, you know, a 72 year old man is probably the last guy you want to ask about analytics and computers. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, I don't even like my cell phone. So it's just like, <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I do. Yeah, there's some good. There's some goods to it, absolutely. But it's not Madden. It's it's not, and it's not fantasy football. It's it's not. It's still a person's game. It's a people's game. It's still, you know, a lot of rules have been changed. A lot of ways, usually to try to score more points or get more yardage. That's pretty evident. But. It's it's still it's a people game and you got to coach people and and you know I just there are good things in the analytics I don't want to say that but I just don't think that everything is analytical. Anything else? Well, uh, without going too far down this rabbit hole, what do you feel is good in analytics versus not? Well, just you know, down and distance tendencies, formation tendencies. Things like that that kind of hold up over a long period of time. You can't do things based off of one game. It always has to be off of a long period of time. I mean, if they run a certain play or one play, if they're 80% run on this down in this formation, yeah, that's good analytics. That's good information. That's probably – and they're successful team, they probably are not going to change. You know, uh, but, you know, you just – to do things sometimes on one game breakdown or something like that, it's, it's nothing. And 
just like I say, the biggest things to me is like when they start saying whether you should go for it on fourth down or whether you should do this, you should do that. There's so many factors, weather, conditions, type of game, a feel for the game. Are we stopping them on short yardage? You know, I mean, the computer doesn't know that stuff. Computer can give you percentages and things like that, and those things that are always come into, those are, those are probably good. When an opponent has a guy like CP, with y'all, how much more difficult does it make you for you to match defensive personnel when he's on the field? With Tom? No, with Cordero Patterson. If an opponent's got a guy like him who can line up in a lot of different places, how much different, oh, how much more difficult does it make you when you're trying to match personnel hard. with that group? Hard, because is he a receiver? Or is he a back guy? I don't, you know, you don't know. I, that's always difficult, you know. And you got Hurst, and you got, you know, number eight. I mean, all those guys are kind of like, you know, you can put. Uh, two tight ends and two backs out there, which is a kind of a weird personnel and end up in four wides. I mean, it's, it's, it's always, that's, that stuff's always difficult. And, you know, you're trying to match up upstairs and the poor guy that's trying to give you the personnel is trying to figure out what personnel it is. And so sometimes you get your call in late or you become vanilla because you just got to get a call in there real quick to get set up. And that, it makes it tough on, on uh, calling a game, really tough. We good? Awesome. All right, appreciate it. All right, thank you.